Type 1 hypersensitivity reactions are a type of unwanted immune response mediated by preformed IgE antibodies. In this video, I'll share my visual mnemonic to help you remember all the information about type 1 hypersensitivity. First, take a look at that sensor gun over here. Yeah, it's one of those automatic guns that senses motion and shoots. You know, like the ones in spy movies. All top secret facilities have these sensor guns too. By the way, this sensor gun coincidentally helps me remember hypersensitivity type 1. Get it? Sensor and hypersensitivity both have the word sense in them, and gun rhymes with one. You might even say this is a hypersensitive gun for type 1 hypersensitivity. Type 1 hypersensitivity is a type of misdirected immune reaction against harmless antigens, like peanuts or shellfish. These antigens are called allergens, so type 1 hypersensitivity is actually what we most commonly call allergy. Type 1 hypersensitivity actually happens in two distinct phases, starting with the immediate phase and progressing into the late phase reaction. Let's explore the scene to find out more. Now, notice how the sensor gun is blurred in motion. Because these sensor guns move super fast, immediately after they detect any motion. Anyway, this blurred sensor gun reminds me that type 1 HSR happens really fast, as in immediately after antigen exposure. Get it? A fast-moving gun for a fast reaction? As I said, type 1 hypersensitivity happens almost immediately after we are exposed to the allergen. Think of someone with peanut allergies. The allergic response happens almost immediately, right? To understand why type 1 HSR happens so quickly, take a look at these eels over here. No wonder why this area has such tight security. It's the top secret lab for mutant animals. See how these eels have these forked tails, making them look like the letter Y? Well, the Y-shaped eels also help me remember IgE antibodies. You know, since antibodies are also Y-shaped, and eel sounds like E. These are the Ig eels. The Y-shaped eels are here to remind us that type 1 hypersensitivity is mediated by IgE antibodies. These IgE antibodies are preformed, meaning they are already made and hanging out in the body. Normally, IgE targets antigens found on parasites and other pathogens. However, in type 1 hypersensitivity, it targets harmless allergens, leading to an unwanted immune response. Let's talk about exactly what happens in this immune response to IgE. Check out this guard getting up from the table, wielding his trusty baseball bat. Of course, this guard is getting up. He has to check out why the sensor gun fired. You know how these thuggish guys always have a baseball bat to intimidate intruders? By the way, this baseball bat is actually our symbol for basophil, since baseball is our recurring symbol for basophil. We're using a baseball bat here to represent basophils. Basophils are activated by IgE in type 1 hypersensitivity. When IgE binds to the allergen with its antigen binding end, the other end, called the FC region, is left exposed. Basophils recognize and bind to this FC end with a special receptor called an FC epsilon receptor. A lot of IgE binding to basophils causes them to activate, releasing inflammatory mediators like histamine. This histamine release is the engine that drives the first phase of type 1 hypersensitivity. However, basophils are not the only cells that respond to IgE to cause type 1 hypersensitivity. Notice the giant mastiff that also acts as a guard dog for security. Mastiffs are these massive dogs, so they are the obvious choice for guarding a top secret facility. Well, this mastiff is also our recurring symbol for mast cells. Get it? A mastiff for mast cells? And just like basophils, mast cells also recognize the FC end of IgE bound to an allergen using the same FC epsilon receptor. When mast cells bind to IgE, they activate and degranulate, releasing histamine and other inflammatory stuff. You should remember that histamine released by both mast cells and basophils is the main driver of type 1 hypersensitivity. So what exactly happens when all this inflammatory stuff is released? 
Let's find out. Oh, geez, no wonder why this sensor gun fired. The sneeze of the intruder must have set it off. Looks like she is some spy sent in to steal the mutant eels. But unfortunately, she's allergic to fish. See how she's even developing hives? By the way, this sneezing and allergic reaction should remind you of allergies. Since an allergic reaction is the overall result of the histamine and other stuff released from basophils and mast cells. You should really think of type 1 hypersensitivity as being synonymous with an allergic reaction. Mild symptoms include sneezing, a runny nose, and red raised rashes, informally called hives, but formally referred to as urticaria. Severe allergy causes anaphylaxis, which can manifest as airway compromise or hypotension. The primary driver of these symptoms is histamine, which works to dilate blood vessels, increase vascular permeability, and cause bronchospasm. Test riders especially want you to remember that the urticaria, or red skin wheels that develop in allergy, are caused by histamine. If it helps, just think about how you can use antihistamine like Claritin to treat allergies. Truthfully speaking, mast cell and basophil-mediated histamine release dictates the first or immediate phase of type 1 hypersensitivity. Let's move on to what happens afterwards in the late or delayed phase. Turn to the yo-yo on the table. Must have been what the guard was using to entertain his mastiff. Anyway, this yo-yo is our recurring symbol for eosinophils, since yo-yo kind of sounds like eosinophils. You know, it's the yo-yo cinephil. Eosinophils are involved in the late or delayed phase of type 1 hypersensitivity. This usually occurs a few hours after exposure, since eosinophils are themselves attracted by chemical signals released by basophils and mast cells. Eosinophil activation by IgE also contributes to inflammation seen in type 1 hypersensitivity. Lastly, notice the flames on this car parked outside. Looks like the sensor gun missed our intruder instead hitting the car they used to drive into the facility. And don't cars always explode into flames in these movie scenes? Anyway, the flames here help me remember inflammation. Inflammation and tissue damage occur as late symptoms in the type 1 hypersensitivity response, usually 2-4 to four hours after exposure. The exact pathophysiology here is complicated, but generally speaking, other leukocytes are attracted to the site of exposure and release cytokines to cause inflammation. These cytokines cause vasodilation and an increase in vascular permeability, leading to redness, swelling, pain, and warmth, the cardinal signs of inflammation. Recurrent inflammation leads to repeated cycles of tissue damage and healing, creating scars in affected tissues. In general, I would focus far less on eosinophils and inflammation in type 1 hypersensitivity. It's really far more high yield to focus on the mast cells and basophils. All right, that's it for type 1 hypersensitivity. Let's recap and get out of here. Type 1 hypersensitivity reactions are a type of unwanted immune response. It is caused by preformed IgE antibodies against harmless allergens. In other words, type 1 hypersensitivity is what you commonly know as allergy. Because it is caused by preformed antibodies, type 1 hypersensitivity reactions begin quickly, almost instantly after exposure. The immune response is divided into two phases, the early phase and the less important late phase. The early phase reaction happens immediately after exposure and is caused by IgE binding to receptors on mast cells and basophils. The activation of mast cells and basophils releases histamine and other inflammatory mediators, which then act to cause the symptoms of allergy and anaphylaxis. The late phase reaction happens hours after exposure and is mediated mostly by eosinophils. The late phase reaction is responsible for further inflammation and tissue damage. Phew, now we're actually done with type 1 HSR. I'll catch you on the other side. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also support our team by visiting pixarize.com, where you'll find exclusive videos and interactive review images. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.